Adrian, what the hell are you doing? I've taken to collecting portraits of handsome men. Really? Okay. Oh, wait. No. That's better. Welcome to Strip Cover Lit, I'm Adrian Ford. And I'm Dalton Gentry. And we are here with another review. Dalton, what are we reviewing right now? We had a request for more Shakespeare. Shakespeare. Therefore, we obliged with Sonnet 1. Yes. Because who else has read Sonnet 1? <laughs> uh, so from the beginning, Sonnet 1. Uh, I'll read first so you can tell me that I'm wrong. Sonnet 1. <clears throat> Willem Shakespeare. You're wrong. I know. From fairest creatures we desire increase that thereby beauty's rose may, might never die, but as the riper should by time decrease his tender air might bear his memory. But thou, contracted to thy own bright eyes, feeds thy light's flame with, sub -sub with self substantial fuel, making a famine where abundance lies, thyself thy foe, to thy sweet self too cruel. Thou, thou that art now the world's fresh ornament and only herald to the gaudy spring within thine own time but buriest thy con thy content and tender churl makes waste in niggarding pity the world or else this glutton be to eat the world's due by the grave and thee not a single person knows what i just said yeah um this one always trips me up so i apologize in advance i think it's, it's a weird one yeah. it is weird there are a lot of clunking syllables right next to each other yes from fairest creatures we desire increase that thereby beauty's rose may never die but as the riper should by time decrease his tender air might bear his memory but thou contracted to thine own bright eyes feeds thy light feeds thy light's flame with self-substantial fuel making a famine where abundance lies thyself thy foe to thy sweet self too cruel thou that art now the world's fresh ornament and only herald to the gaudy spring. Within thine own bud buriest thy content, and tender churl makes waste thine inniggarding. Pity the world, or else this glutton be, to eat the world's due by, thy, by the grave and thee. Okay. All right. So three good things, three bad things. What are your three good things? Uh, this is a great intro into sonnets. This is the one to start with if you're wa wanting to just dive right in. The reason for that is Shakespeare covers almost all of his themes through this sonnet. This is love, this is beauty, this is the passage of time, this is death. Whatever you want in Shakespeare, you're going to find in Sonnet 1. Uh, and you can read this, and you can read this, and you can read this, and it is going to change every single time what you pick out in it. Uh, phrases, or oh, was that three? That was three. Oh, sorry, I lost count. Uh, phrases like contracted to thine own bright eyes, self-substantial fuel, and pity the world add up to a grandiose poem. Uh, two, Shakespeare makes the grand very personal, and that's what perhaps okay. Shakespeare does best. That's why Shakespeare in a time of peasants was able to write about kings. Yes. Right. Uh, thyself thy foe, that line thyself thy foe. Um, thyself thy foe to thy sweet self too cruel. That is not my favorite line, but that might be the most quotable line. Okay. Is that line eight, perhaps? Oh. Is that yours? Is oh. that your favorite? Okay, well. I do believe that is line eight. Three bad things. Hmm. Uh, three bad Quick things. Uh, this is not the best known sonnet. It is the first sonnet, number one, numerically, uh, but not a lot of people are going to sit around and quote this one. Uh, you have to dig to find the meaning to this. And you can dig yourself as deep as you want, and you're still probably not going to have a clue what he's talking about. Yeah. Uh, and again, this will slap you in the face if you're not ready with it, and you are just going to read words on a page, not have a clue what they mean. Absolutely. Um, my first one, which I'm basically reiterating something you said, this is Englishese. Yes. Right? This is English, but it's a different language. Yes. Uh, once decoded, there is only one turn, and that turn is not a surprise. And we'll get into that later a little bit. Um, there are 50 sonnets in this very book better than this. Yes. Uh, I, I don't know. It's, it's one of those things like uh, if you're going to do a, a collection of short stories, for example, uh, your first one, you want 
to get the reader because that's the first one they're going to read. You want that to be the good one. Uh, not so much with the Sonnet one. You got to remember that these were published in this order. Yes. This is this was a collection of yes. sonnets from Shakespeare at a different time. Yes. This would have gone over much better in that day. Oh, absolutely. And that goes back to the uh, the dated language again. Uh, this would have made a lot more sense at that point. Absolutely. And when you think about things in this fashion, which we're, we're, we'll get around to the best line in, in just a second, but I want to get this out before I forget it. Um, this is Sonnet 1 in the collection written in this, written and published in this order, right? So think of your favorite album. How does it start? Does it start with the single that you heard on the radio? No, it doesn't. No. It starts with something very indicative of what is on the rest of the album. And this is very indicative of Shakespeare's songs. Like you said. And of course, just take my point and make it whatever. Uh, my line of choice. Thou that art now the world's fresh ornament. Is that the one I wanted? Is that line eight? No, that is not line eight. You to be pretentious and read from your big Shakespeare book. Oh, shut up. I don't have enough. I didn't want to write in this one. This is the pretty one. Uh, thyself thy foe, to thy sweet self too cruel. Yeah. I, I think that's, that's the one you can take from this. That thereby beauty's rose might never die. Okay. That's not bad. That's a pretty good That's one. That's not bad. It's pretty good. Uh, so let's talk about Shakespeare and the sonnets as a collection, because we've gone through a few of them now. This one, like we've already said, is the setup to what you're going to expect with Shakespeare. There's everything in this. Yeah. Uh, you're going to have your passage of time in this. Uh, you're going to have beauty. You're going to have death, decay. This is everything. This is the grandiose on a personal level. It is. Um, is it the best? Mm, no. So uh, may I break this down? Please, please. Okay, so... From fairest creatures we desire increase, that thereby beauty's rose may never die, but as the riper should by time decrease, his tender air might bear his, bear his memory. Beautiful things, you should make more beautiful things. Uh, that way beauty, beauty, your beauty lives longer than you do. Okay. You which are beautiful should multiply so that your beauty lives on. Those are the first four lines. Uh, the next three lines, or four lines, but thou contracted to thine own bright eyes, feeds thy light flame with substantial with self-substantial fuel, making a famine where abundance lies, thyself thy foe to thy sweet self too cruel. But you are keeping this beauty to yourself, and making others suffer because of it, by not spreading your beauty and keeping it to yourself, others suffer. Thou art now the world's fresh ornament. And only herald to thy gaudy spring. You're the hot young thing. Right. Within thine own bud buriest thy content, and tender churl makes waste in niggarding. This is limited this is a limited time offer. So get it now and everyone benefits. Right? Okay. Get it now, baby. This doesn't last forever. Uh, pity the world or else this glutton be to eat the world's due by the grave and thee. Otherwise, it's just masturbation, and you will not pass anything on, and this beauty will die with you. Okay. Can you do me a favor, just for my own amusement? What's that? Will you read the annotations of Adrian Fort Reed's Shakespeare in just the full, the full strip? <laughs> so this is its own poem. That's what you're telling me. Please. Beautiful things make more beautiful things, so beauty lives longer than you do. But you are keeping this beauty to yourself and making others suffer. You are the hot young thing. This is a limited time offer, so get it now and everyone benefits. Otherwise, just, it's just masturbation and you will not pass anything on and it will die with you. That is like me and Charles Bukowski and the baby. <laughs> you should send that off to publication <laughs> and see if you can slip it into a lit journal somewhere and just call it like, you know, the first. Call it Unsonnet 1. Unsonnet 1. Uh, that is beautiful. We should actually, we should stem off of that idea of taking a poem and <laughs> ruining it. Uh, but you're right. You're right. That is a good and fair breakdown in my opinion. Um, and it's it very Shakespearean. Again, this is uh, what he talks about. And this is art. How do you mean this is art? This is art. This is taking beauty and trying to encapsulate it and share it with the world. And if you have that gift and you're not using it, 
you're just wasting it. That, that's interesting because that's one of my interpretations of this poem. Oh, really? Yes. That's uh, right there. Right? What's that? Uh, I can't read is your this hand about art. Okay, uh, but the, that I think that's a fair argument. It really is. Um, because if you are an artist, you paint, you draw, you write great literature, and you're not sharing that with the world, you're correct. It's just masturbation. Yes. Uh, you are just doing it for yourself, and you are greedy, and you're going to waste that talent. Um, um, I don't know if I should tell the story about myself or not. Yes, you should, because you already prefaced that. Everybody wants to know. Carry on. I used to organize and host and participate in poetry nights at the community college I went to. Okay. And one of the things that, that we eventually got into, like, there was one of these poetry nights, you think, oh, I have a bunch of kids sitting around here and all reading poetry. One of these poetry nights, we had 48 people. Holy shit. There were seven readers. 48 people watching seven readers, okay? That's impressive. Yeah. That's impressive. So uh, what I started doing was trying to incorporate more things. Okay. People who, who did music. Uh, artists tried to line the room with people's art. So I go to this uh, this art class on campus, and I walk in there, and these people, uh, you know, they're they're sort of half hipster, half emo man, and and they're doing their thing. And I'm like, hey, you know, we're doing this poetry night thing. We'd like to have people's stuff around the room. I don't know if any of you guys would be interested. And they're just doing their thing, man. And so I started going off a little bit, and I was like, look, if this is what you're doing, and you're just taking this class to take this class, first off, you're a bad person, because there's someone that would want to be in here, then you're taking their seat that is actually into art. B, if you're doing this just to be here and just to have it, you're masturbating. You're not doing anything, really. You do all the work, and at the end of the day, the only one impressed with what you've done is you. I mean, that's masturbation. It's true. That's, that's true. what art is if you don't share it. If you, don't, if you do not seek to garner an audience, art is masturbation. Uh, ironically enough, since you were in the art theater and film building of your campus, there was someone masturbating in the corner <laughs> as, as an art piece. So it, it's wonderful. It's beautiful. Yeah. Uh, full circle. <laughs> but yeah, I, I think that um, this, is, this is about art and the artist to me. Okay. Um, that is my interpretation of it. That is how I read this poem and get something useful and motivational from it. Okay. Uh, so, for example, this line. But thou contracted to thine own bright eyes, feedst thy light's flame with self-substantial fuel. Now, I think it's very easy to, to look at that in terms of just beauty, right? Okay. You're a conceited person who is beautiful and spend all your time in front of the mirror, da 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 But bright eyes, contracted to thine own bright eyes. To me, that sounds like the artist's eye. The person who is able to look at something and see what's really behind it. Okay. Not to see what's looking back. Not to see what is being projected towards, but to see what's in there. Okay. Right? Uh, I really like that idea of that interpretation. Uh, although I still think we have to do, you know, Adrian unsonnets. Uh, that that yeah, that's the best interpretation that I could say we could go with with this. Because again, if you just read this, this is words on a page. It's very difficult to get through. Um, people who are gifted in the arts, that's something that is absolutely beautiful. Someone who can sit down and, like you said, and capture what's behind something. Uh, someone who can sit down and write something that motivates, that touches people. Uh, it, it's a gift. And all too often, those people do not share that gift. Um, I am not going to claim to be gifted by any sense of the mean. But anything I do write, I don't like to share. So I don't know what that was like at this time. I assume the arts were, a, a, that was what you did. So you did it to eat. Well, there were, or if you didn't, you didn't do any of it, yes. right? Uh, uh, so what you're t saying is that in your personal life, you're making a famine where abundance lies. Right? I think so. You write and you write and you write and you write. And it's never going it anywhere. In. Keep it all in. Think it's never going to put bread on the table. Uh, so yeah, I, I, I. It doesn't have to put bread on the table to be successful. No, 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 no. But I mean, that from this line at this point in time, yeah, to be successful as an artist, you put bread on the table. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying now. When, at the time this was written. Absolutely. Okay. You're not talking interpretation. You're talking in the literal yes. world. Yes. Okay. Um, this is a very weird interpretation of this because I don't think we've ever actually wholeheartedly agreed 
uh, yeah, with each other. Yeah, I'm not sure where to go now. Uh, this is awkward, and I don't like it. So please say something that I can disagree with. Okay. <laughs> I just let's see. Um, so this was written by Shakespeare. Yes. Shakespeare is male. Yes. We're assuming the speaker is male. Usually do, yes. So when you're taking this as a literal interpretation of the poem, okay. and you're speaking to this person who is so beautiful but so conceited, okay. listen to this language here. His tender air might bear his memory. So this is another man that we're speaking to. Okay. Are there homose homosexual overtones here? And we've had this argument before with Shakespeare. Yes. Uh, I think it's something that's impo it's an argument that's impossible not to have if you're looking for argument with Shakespeare. And if you're looking to actually discuss the work and, and interpretation. You have to, you have to. And that's, again, it's one of those things that it's not like someone who wrote this 50 years ago uh, where we can look back and we figure it out. It's not like somebody who wrote this now. Eventually people are just going to be like, I don't know, go check their Facebook page. It's still right, up. Right. Uh, you don't know. It could have been. And that's kind of the beauty of Shakespeare's wordplay is he can layer in so much. And that was something he did. He would layer in subtle things to get around the royalty so he could perform this thing. Uh, so you never really know with Shakespeare. I, I think that argument could be made, absolutely. Um, I'm still kind of in love with the idea of calling it art, but I think that's a valid argument. Okay. So we also know from previous uh, readings of Shakespeare and, and previous delving into sonnets, diving in, delving into sonnets previously, um, that there's a lot of academe that academe. is about uh, these sonnets possibly being dedicated to his son, his yes. dead son. Um, Pity the world or else this glutton be to eat the world's dew and by the grave, by the grave and thee. Is that a mention of, of uh, is there something to be done there? I think that's a stretch on that one. Okay, well, two lines earlier than that. Within thine own bud, bury is thy content. This is not a rose. This no. is not a flower. This is the bud. Okay. Again, we have that mention of the bud. Again, previous to that, we have the mention of spring. The rebirth. And only herald to, thy, to the gaudy spring. And if you want to go on the in interpretation that spring is some form of rebirth and renewal. Or, or uh, simply birth. Simply birth. Right. Uh, the passing on of your genes is birth and renewal. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. That, that I still want to say that one's a heavy stretch. Uh, I can pull the art. I can agree with the homosexual overtones. I'm not sure about this one. And this is the one that everybody seems to comment and poke at and says, oh, it's about his son, dumbass. Thanks for not pointing that one out. This one? No, every video that oh, we do about the sonnets. Oh, Have oh. you not read the comments? Uh, but I, I don't know. That one's such a stretch for me on that. It okay. really is. Okay. So, uh, I, I genuinely don't. I think I'm comfortable with this, honestly. I, I think we agreed for once in our literary career, and we should accept that. No, there has to be something here we're digging I into. Know. Something that we, we will disagree with. Well, I think okay. we dug. So, so speak against it being about his son. Can you point to anything that says that, no, this is, this is proof that it's not. You've got, the, you've, got the over, you've got the overtones of death, right? Yes. Those come in. Uh, you have the mentions of youth. Uh, Shakespeare's son died uh, in some form of illness, correct? Do we yes. know for sure 100%? I, I don't know what illness, but I'm fairly positive. It, yeah. Literary history is just hurting me right now. Uh, thyself, thy foe. I mean, I'm not arguing against you. Your, your body strengthening. failing. Yeah. Yeah, so. But if you die from illness, uh, making a famine where abundance lies, thyself, thy foe, to thy sweet self too cruel. That's a man whose body turned against him. Yes. So, uh, damn it, Shakespeare, why do you do this to me? No, we've also got these, um, was it eight? Hold on. We've got the whole deal about, uh, so long as men can breathe or eyes can see, so long lives this, and this gives life to thee, from Sonnet 18. That uh, we're assuming means, look, my son died, but I wrote this about him. Yes. So this means he'll live forever, right? His tender air might bear his memory. That thereby beauty's rose might, ne might never die. So, I mean, if you do want to do this again, if we want to say Shakespeare's sonnets were used to immortalize his son, 
I think it's in there. It, it could be in there, absolutely. Um, damn it. From fairest Every creatures we desire increase. So I've given, I've, I've passed on what, it, what would have been beautiful in me to my son who died, but what, what, what is beautiful in me I was want, prompted by my son yes. to be passed on. And therefore, I'm going to attempt to make him live forever. That thereby this. beauty's rose might never die, yes. Uh, this is the beauty and the bitch with Shakespeare. Is you sit down and you can read this again and again and again, and you can plug so much into it. Yeah. Uh, and I, I don't think a lot of people give that a lot of credit. Most people say Shakespeare, like, oh, Romeo and Juliet, that's nice. We did that in high school. I didn't understand it. I didn't understand it. Somebody died. I was Tibble. Uh, <laughs> Ouch, I was Tibble. We did it in high school. <laughs> you monster. Um, I don't know. There's a lot more to it, I think. If you really sit and break it down, uh, you can find way too much. Could this be from a woman's perspective? I mean, there's, I don't think there's an argument that it wouldn't be from a woman's perspective. I am vying for your attention, but you're so wrapped up in yourself. You're so vain, you probably think the sonnet's about you. <laughs> You say, that's beautiful. I, I don't understand the pop reference, but I know the song, so I'm just going to roll with that one there. Uh, please read this one again. Please wrap this one up before we delve any further deep in this. I'm going into, like, a, a Shakespeare poem. <laughs> From fairest creatures we desire increase, that thereby beauty's rose may never die. But as the riper should by time decrease, his tender air might bear his memory. But thou, contracted to thine own bright eyes, feeds thy light's flame with self-substantial fuel, making a famine where abundance lies, thyself, thy foe, thy, to thy sweet self too cruel. Thou that art now the world's fresh ornament, and only herald to thy gaudy spring, within thine own bud buriest thy content, and tender churl, makes waste and niggarding. Pity the world, or else this glutton be, to eat the world's due by the grave in thee. Do you want to rate this? Do you want to give uh, what you should read next? Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, I'd give this one uh, 91. I gave this 90 gluttons out of 100. 90? Uh, and again, I'm not going to suggest anything. No, how do you suggest something? If you like the sonnets by William Shakespeare, maybe you should read the rest of the sonnets by William Shakespeare. There's nothing you can compare you to this. You go by theme. There is you, nothing you can compare to this. You go by voice. You go by literary greatness. What are you going you, to compare to Shakespeare? I am, ob okay, obviously, when reading Shakespeare's poetry, you have to just sit back and listen to some Freddie Mercury. Okay. And see, this is the part that, that pisses me off about you right now, is that this was going to be the time I took sort of the, you know... The off-the-wall route. The off-the-wall off hand, you know, backhanded sort of, yeah, go ahead yeah. and do this. And you had to fucking go and That's say... That's what I do. Oh, you know, I don't think you should read anything. Read some more sonnets. There's another one on the same page, yeah. man. God damn it, Jesse. God damn it, Jesse. So that's what I say. Freddie Mercury, I'll give you that one. Uh, I you stole my thunder! I don't know if we're going to do any more sonnets, should we? Yes. I mean, I think, honestly, we should go through and rewrite all of these. Uh, Strip Cover Lit presents the unsonnets, uh, and we should publish that. Billy Wiggle Sticks Unsonnets. Oh my god. Yes. Uh, so if you like that, and you like old Billy Wigglesticks on Sonnets, make sure you hit that subscribe button. I'm going to use that in daily life from now on. I'm just letting you know. Hit the like button. Follow us on Twitter at Strip Cover Lit. At Strip Cover. Follow us on Twitter at Strip Cover. I am at Adrian Anyway. This is at The Dalton. We are on Facebook at Strip Cover Lit. And we are on thin Thinner, Thinner Gram. Thinner Inst internet at stroke cover list we should get a myspace just to pike it in there